Hello and welcome to Box, where we unbox, review and demonstrate the latest tech. Today we have with us the Ayama G Master GB3467WQSU Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor. New to the market in 2022, this monitor will catch your eye with its ultra wide display finished off nicely with that smooth curvature, holding some of the most sought after specs for high quality gaming. Taking a look at the box, we see it supports some brilliant features like adaptive sync and an impressive 165Hz max refresh rate, just to name a few. Opening up the box, you'll find everything you need to get started in the top, including a handful of connection cables, the power cable, and a few safety and setup guides. Ayama are always good for giving you all the cables you need to play games from various inputs at peak quality. You get three cables, one HDMI, one DisplayPort to DisplayPort, and finally a USB to USB-B to make the most of those extra onboard USB slots on the monitor itself. The power cable is a little short, so you will need to place it relatively close to an outlet if you can. With the arm already fixed to the back, attaching the V-shaped stand is an easy task. Just fit the base onto the end of the arm and tighten the screw and the monitor is ready to put in place. The whole monitor weighs around 8.7 kilograms and can be quite cumbersome when manoeuvring around, so just be conscious of its weight and size when considering placement. Taking a quick look at the back here, you'll notice it's classically designed to blend in with practically any setup. Its clean look doesn't necessarily give off gamer vibes, which is perfect for the minimal types looking for a monitor that merges into both an office and game setup. Apart from the long speaker strip along the top, the controls on the left and the inputs cut out on the bottom, the look gets straight to the point with no nonsense, focusing more on the performance. The stand is adjustable to a certain extent, allowing that 3 degree tilt forward and the 20 degree tilt back to match your height and eyeline. I am quite tall and I felt that it met the perfect height for comfortable gameplay thanks to that 130mm adjustment. Unlike some, you can't pivot the monitor into portrait mode. It will pivot left and right considerably, but this is not recommended with it being ultra wide. The stand is simple enough to leave plenty of room for your keyboard and mouse, also housing a little cable tidy slot under the display to keep all of your wires neat and tidy. However, if you don't have the space, there is a 100 by 100 millimeter vase mount on the back for wall mounting. On the back, you'll find all the connections you'll need to get the most out of your gaming experience. On the underside of the cutout, you'll find two HDMIs, two display ports, a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, four 3.0 USBs and a USB 3.0 A to B connection. When it comes to the HDMIs, you can only achieve a max refresh rate of 100Hz with both HDMI ports, but of course you can reach that full 165Hz refresh rate from the display ports, which you'll see demonstrated in all the gameplay footage displayed in this video. Taking a look from the front, we get that very familiar Ayama style with a good size bezel around the top and sides and a slightly thicker section on the base for the power LED and logo placement. So let's turn it on and see what this monitor can do. This display is a 34 inch matte finish LED with a 1500R curved screen at a 3440 by 1440 resolution. Getting down to the finer details, you'll find the screen also has an impressive 3000 to 1 static contrast ratio as standard that can reach 80 million to 1 in some of the higher spec game titles. Playing a few game trailers and movies, I really feel we get a good glimpse of the quality output straight out of the box. For a start, I love making the most of the ultra wide screen to enjoy some of my favourite 21 by 9 movies on Netflix. The colours seem accurate and came out vivid even in a bright room. Of course the display is matte, so colours do seem a little less punchy than I would like, but mostly it played to its strengths putting out a crisp, clean distinction between light and dark portions of the picture, delivering a highly cinematic look. As it has a decent curvature, it's best experienced looking at it dead on as opposed to at an angle. The viewing angle is great, but you will lose the immersive benefits of the curvature as well as a little loss in clarity if sitting at a sharp angle. Playing the 21x9 supported games like Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite, they all played out beautifully with no noticeable lag or picture inconsistencies, which is pretty reassuring. The slight curvature really stood out out during gameplay, with that little extra screen space filling out my field of view enough that I felt a part of the game rather than just spectating it. I felt less distracted by my surroundings, giving off an elevated experience compared to any regular monitor, even making the gameplay more comfortable on the whole. Other than watching movies and playing games, using the monitor for browsing the internet or watching a YouTube video, or even just typing out a document, the extra space made all the difference, especially when placing two browsing windows next to each other when multitasking without having to make the window 
windows smaller to fit the space. Now the specifications state that the monitor has a panel brightness of 550 nits. I put the brightness levels between 50 and 100 and in a dark space. I thought it was perfectly bright even when playing a dark game. It can be tweaked pretty easily using the joystick in the OSD menu, but I felt I hardly needed to touch these controls at all as it was fine for both gaming and browsing straight out of the box. Taking a look now at the gaming performance, I tried Forza Horizon 5 and Halo Infinite to see how well it coped with fast paced busy games. With this monitor you get between 48 and 165Hz refresh rate depending on what game you're playing, as well as an impressive 0.4 millisecond motion picture response time. It's also blessed with FreeSync Premium and HDR support to try and keep gameplay as smooth as possible while keeping a consistently sharp image quality. As you can see, the games played beautifully smooth with no visible stuttering or ghosting, making the most of that curved comfort. Even sitting relatively close when filming gameplay, the picture quality was decent and detailed without me touching any of the settings. I played both games with FreeSync and HDR enabled and found it really helped when racing through the streets at high speeds because the image remained relatively smooth the entire time. The difference may not be completely noticeable, but it really saved my eyes from strain because I knew it was working hard in the background to keep the picture smooth smooth and sharp no matter how much movement there was on the screen or what I was playing. In this quick comparison I could see that the FreeSync did do a good job in keeping that picture consistent. It's a handy feature to have because I know no matter what I play, the picture is passively improved without having to constantly alter the settings. Although I can play games that aren't ultra wide compatible, I did feel that there weren't quite enough games out there yet that support this display size, but other than that, even in the lower quality and the smaller picture size on regular and older games, it still played sharp and Clear, which was good to see. It was brilliant to see that the monitor had two 2 watt inbuilt speakers if I needed them. Though they weren't the best quality, the audio reached a decent volume and it was perfect for just hearing game sound without needing to purchase extra speakers. To give you an idea on what the output is like, here's a quick sound sample of the quality on offer here. In the OSD, it's easy to adjust small settings quickly using the simple sliders and toggle switches, making it easy to make small changes like tuning the blacks or fixing contrast and brightness. I like some of the little features you probably wouldn't think of, like the ability to turn off the startup logo or utilize the blue light reducer, just making those small adjustments that can help save energy or ease eye comfort over time. I didn't calibrate the display or alter any of the other settings apart from turning HDR on, and even seeing how good the quality was straight out of the box. I knew this monitor was a great no fuss solution who wanted something great without tweaking any features while still having those extra customizing features to personalize the display if I wanted to. So after using the display for a few hours, I found this monitor to be exceptionally good value for the cost. The extra space in the ultra wide monitor makes for a more immersive experience in gaming, nicely curving around my field of vision to make me feel like I'm within the game rather than spectating. The quality is exceptionally sharp with some vibrant colors despite the slight effect of the matte display. Overall, I thought this monitor just adds the right amount of luxury to your gaming monitor experience, while still offering a decent space to work and watch movies in style. So what are your thoughts on this Ayama Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor? Let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.